Hello and welcome to Chocolate Treasure. I'm Jacques Torres and today I'm in my pastry kitchen at Le Cirque 2000. When I'm not taping Desert Circus, this is where I am the pastry chef. We serve close to 500 desserts a day and a good half of them are chocolate desserts. People love chocolate. So that's why I collected some of my favorite chocolate recipe for you. They are all really delicious and most of them are pretty simple. But if you love to be challenged, stay with us. One of the simplest chocolate desserts is one of the best. In fact, chocolate fondant is always on the menu here at Le Cirque. It's warm and melting on the center, and it's cakey and crunchy on the outside. It's easy. In fact, it's so easy. It's nothing more than chocolate, butter, and egg white. Um, first dessert of the show is going to be what I call a fondant au chocolat. And I'm using a very good chocolate here. Belgium chocolate. Um, first things to do that is to melt the butter and it's already melt almost. And I'm going to cut a piece of chocolate. So something to show you here when you cut chocolate is to always cut the angle and not trying to cut the big pieces. Otherwise it's too difficult and Lazy like I am, <laughs> I don't like to do difficult things, so, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so remember, always the angle. Okay, it's almost done. One more piece. So you just wait until the butter starts to boil, then we're going to add the chocolate in it. Try to don't put everything on the floor. Okay, that work. Now I'm just going to melt everything together. And I'm going to start the egg white like that. Okay, let's go. I have here a little bit of cocoa powder and a little bit of salt to make the chocolate a little bit stronger. That accentuates the taste of the chocolate to put a little bit of salt. You know, a friend of mine who is in the audience today tell me some days ago, I tell him, you know, we're going to do that pastry show and I'm pretty anxious in front of an audience. And he tell me, he say, he say, what you have to think about is when you look at the audience, think they're all in their pyjama. <laughs> so what I have to tell you is, you really look good in your pyjama, you know? <laughs> okay, so that's completely melt now. Actually, that's something pretty easy to do. It's pretty fast. You can put that together in 15, 20 minutes. And um, it's a great dessert. When you have a crowd at home, you do that. You do a double batch, you put the leftover in the freezer, 
The next Sunday, you don't have to walk. It's already done. So here, I'm going to add the cocoa and the salt. Mix everything very well, no lambs. Okay, it's ready. And they're quite almost ready now. Let me check the oven. Yeah, it's good too. Okay, one more minute and it's ready to go. So you see when I put the egg white and the sugar, I put everything together. So like that, I'm sure the egg white don't go in to crumble. If you don't do that, if you put the sugar too late, the egg white come too light, it's not enough dry inside and they, start, and they start to separate. So remember, put the sugar at the beginning. You really look good in a pyjama, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I'm going to mix all that together. So you see they're really creamy, huh? Now actually I can put everything together like that. And use a rubber spatula when you mix it because it's the only things will really go on the bottom of the pan and on the bottom of the ball and bring the chocolate up and really mix everything together. Or you can put your hands also, you know, it's... <laughs> so, you don't want to over mix that, otherwise all the air go out of the dessert, then when you bite on it, if it's not enough air, it's going to be like a ball, you know, it's going to come back. So be careful to when you mix that. Okay, now, that's a piping bag. And instead of holding the piping bag in my hand and just put everything in it, I think it's a little bit more easy to put that in a bowl and just use my two hands to pour the chocolate in it. That's the easy way. And now I'm going to Sheet pan here. Can you say sheet pan? <laughs> <laughs> it's S H E E T. Okay? <laughs> That's an I'm from Brooklyn. <laughs> I have a small accent. So don't make fun of me. <laughs> Actually, you know what? What's going to be fun here is I'm going to pipe two of them. I'm going to put them in the oven, and you're going to come and pipe the other one. <laughs> so you see what I do? I'm going to help you for the, for the first one. Yeah, we have about five minutes now. Oh! <laughs> I'll tell you to wait for me. <laughs> You know, I hate to be dirty, you know that? <laughs> okay, we start again, huh? So, <laughs> you give a twist to the, to the bag. Of course, I make it. I don't want to say it's bad, you know, what do you mean? You like it? Mm -hmm. Okay, you eat enough now. <laughs> okay, look what you do. Two thirds of the mold, no more than that, okay? Simple. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like that. One minute. Put your hands here. Okay, you get it. Okay. <laughs> I think it's not going to be orange when you finish that. It's going to be chocolate color. Put your bag a little bit lower. 
You want to try it? <laughs> so tell me a little bit, what is your job? Mm, I'm a ballet dancer. You're a ballet dancer, okay. You're a ballet dancer? Ready? So you know what we're going to do? We're going to finish that. Then you're going to jump on the table. <laughs> Then you're going to show you what you can do, okay? No, I'll show you what I can do in pastries. <laughs> Are you ready for that? No, you have to buy a ticket. I mean, come on. <laughs> you're not going to wimp now. You see that? Now I have chocolate all over my hands, and now he's wimping, you know? And it's, no, 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 I'm not going to do it. You know, don't stay there. No, no. <laughs> no, I don't trust you to do that, so that's why I'm doing it, but... <laughs> no, like that. Like, good. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> <laughs> A little bit less than the other one. Top! Right. Perfect. <laughs> that's great. Nice with a little Okay, now, now what? Don't you think? <laughs> yeah? Don't start to change my wrist. I am the chef. <laughs> Come back. Huh? I am the one who say what we put on the recipes, okay? Right. Okay, okay. That's orange sauce one, actually. Just an idea. Chefs are very susceptible to that. I know, I know. Can we put a little bit more here? How much more? A little bit, you know. A little tiny bit. <laughs> a little bit more. <laughs> no. The show is one and a half hour. You have to walk a little bit faster. Can I sit down now? Yes, go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> Great job. So now. Oh, yeah, yeah, what a mess. Look at that. <laughs> um, it's almost ready, so I'm going to prep the plate, and I'm going to be able to take that out of the oven. So that's some candied orange. No raspberry. <laughs> Little bit of orange sauce. Oui. A little bit of sauce. Where is my sauce? Wait, wait, I have to put the sauce, then you applaud, you know? <laughs> wait! <laughs> I tell you for the question and for the applaud. <laughs> Ready? Ready? Chocolate mousse is still a classic. It's really chocolatey, but light at the same time. People will never get tired of it. This is my favorite chocolate mousse recipe. The first thing I do, I melt the chocolate in a microwave. This is a good way of melting chocolate. So why I put that in a microwave is because chocolate and water doesn't go together. You know, the, the cocoa butter and the, and the water are not very friend. And if we put any water, in the chocolate, the chocolate will come too thick. So that's why I love to do that with the microwave. Now, the things we have to decide when, you, when we do a chocolate mousse is how are we going to make that chocolate mousse light? We have two solutions. We can put cream or egg white. So if you put egg white, you're going to have something a little bit dry, and it will be great to add it with 
actually a little bit of cream or something a little bit richer. Or if you want to eat the chocolate mousse by itself, with cookies or by itself, it will be better to do it with cream because cream contains more fat and that fat will just go down the throat. It's, it's very satisfying, it's, it's good with the chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> so, so first things I'm doing is I have a half cup of sugar here. We're going to start to cook it with a little bit of water. And to go faster, you see I have another, another pot of sugar here already almost cooked. And now I'm going to put five yolks and one egg on the mixer. And beat that. When the, when the sugar, pardon, going to reach the soft ball stage, we will pour the sugar over the eggs. Eggs. All week, I practice to jungle, and that's something. <laughs> I do that all week, and we eat a lot of omelette, you know. <laughs> I broke a lot of eggs, you know, and it's, it doesn't work for me. But I hear a lot of people in the audience here can juggle, so can, can you show me how to do that? <laughs> You know, <laughs> that was not true. I'm glad those eggs are not true. I want to do that again. Give me back. <laughs> Sugar is cooking. Eggs are whipping now. We have to whip that. We have to whip that. So let's have some time here. So, you know, French have the reputation of the wheel of vacation. We are five weeks of vacation in France. We are pretty lazy. So I always look for trick to go a little bit faster. So I realize if with one whisk, you take three minutes to beat the cream. With two, that will be one and a half minutes. <laughs> and you walk. And if you put three, you go even faster. And you walk. Try it, I swear. Almost ready. So you know about the cream, don't whip the cream too much. Soft peak, it's when you get the most volume, so. And soft peak is a little bit more than that. That's ready. Now I have to wash all that, you know. So about sugar. My sugar is a little bit too much cooked here. Way too much. So. Sugar cooked by evaporation. So when, when the sugar is too, it's almost too caramel, you can always add a little bit of water, then the temperature comes down, then you can bring it back to the level you want. So that's softball stage. So you put your finger in the water, put it in the sugar, put back in the water, then you have a little ball of sugar coming out, that means the sugar is ready. And the big joke in the kitchen when you do that, somebody come behind you and steal your water. <laughs> so, so you see a chef in the kitchen running around you, ah, what is the water? <laughs> okay, when you, pull the when you pour the sugar in the mixing bowl, be careful to don't put the sugar on the whisk, otherwise the sugar will go on the, on the, on the bowl, on the side, not on the egg. So, it's no part of the RCP anymore. Now we have to wait like one minute. Beat the, the cream a little bit more. I hope the chocolate is ready because I forgot to check the chocolate now. Yes, it's ready. Good. We're going to add a little bit of orange flavor to that. We do that a lot in France. <laughs> we love to put booze in every dessert we do. Like a tablespoon. <laughs> a big tablespoon.
So we have a way here to mix. We're going to put the egg yolks, or what we call a parfait, inside the cream to temper the cream. Otherwise, the cream is going to be too cold to add the chocolate. Remember the, the way I do it, because if that doesn't work, if you, do don't, if you don't do that, the chocolate will set too fast. Be very gentle when you mix to keep all the air inside your chocolate mousse. Now, second step, it's to add the chocolate. That smells good. No waste, huh? And again, just fold it, don't mix it very delicately. So you stop to mix when you don't see those stripes anymore, those, and when everything is well mixed together, but don't over mix it, otherwise you lose a lot of air inside. That's enough. Filling a bag. That's the first thing we learn when we learn pastry. If you don't, if you do that, you know, that's the way to do it usually. Like that, take a scraper. I have the scraper in my pocket. One second. It's coming. <laughs> take, take the chocolate mousse, fill it like that. But it's a little bit, you know, it's not that hard. So sometimes when you do that, you have the chocolate mousse running and boom, it's on your shoes. So <laughs> then you have to clean your shoes. So the way to do it, something a little bit faster, a little bit easier, twist the bag just under the, the tip, put a cloth pin under it, and put that over, over a bowl or bain-marie, whatever works. Then now you can work with your two hands. I don't like to be in my shoes, so you know. <laughs> a little bit more. You want some? <laughs> no. no. No, we're not going to do it. Now I'm going to take this one. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful glass. Yeah, don't, don't forget to remove that because otherwise, you know, <laughs> the chocolate is going to come from the other side. Okay, so you just fill it, then on top you give a little, you know, some movement like that. Don't make anything too complicated. <laughs> okay, so I prep some stuff to decorate that. I have a clown hat here. So I'm going to put the clown hat on top. It's a little bit soft for that, but. You know, you're going to sink a little bit. Before we stop, I want to show you something else. On the morning, when one morning I was brushing my teeth and I was thinking, you know, I would love to do that, that kind of two cream mixing together with that different pattern, you know, that would be great. But how to do that with, you know, in pastry? So what I come up with that, we're going to use a big bag with a big tip. And I'm going to cut those ones are a little bit, you know, big hole. Oh, it's running. That one too, like that. And I'm going to slide them inside the big bag. Try to don't make too much mess because I have to clean after. Huh? One. And two. Close that. I'm making a mess here. Oops. So let's see if you walk. And we have a B color. And you know, I tried to brush my teeth with it. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> that doesn't work, but you know, for the. Mixing both chocolate mousse like that, it's fun. Let's put some. I don't know what is that, but you know, it's, it's kind of fun.
Now that you know how to make a chocolate mousse, let's take it a step further. It's my philosophy that desserts have to taste good, but also they have to look good. So that's why I make a chocolate mousse mousse. So if you feel like, grab a big bowl of chocolate and give it a try. So, like everyone at home, I have I always have a big bowl. <laughs> A big bowl of five pounds of chocolate melted. Uh, you don't have to have that much chocolate melt, OK? Why I do that is because more chocolate you have in into a bowl, more the chocolate will keep its temperature. If you do half pound in five minutes, you're going to lose the temper of the chocolate. Chocolate will just crystallize on the side, come too hard, and every two minutes you have to go back to the heat. Now, if you have I don't know, five, six, seven pounds of chocolate. That, that will stay like that for at least 15 minutes. So that's why I like to work with big quantity. And you know, every professional likes a lot of chocolate when we work with. So that's ready. I have here a dome mold. OK. So I'm going to fill that. And I'm going to fill every part of the mold. So the difficult thing is not to fill it, it's to empty it, you see. <laughs> OK, so when it's filled, you just flip it over. And remember, over the ball of chocolate. <laughs> Then with a big spatula, you just scrape the extra chocolate. And then now, put it upside down onto in, on top of a cooling rack, just like that. And we can put that in a refrigerator for, let's say, five minutes. Then the chocolate is going to start to set. So we're going to take it out. Then with a paring knife, clean the side. Because chocolate acts like plaster. Chocolate will retract from the mold. And by cutting the side, by cleaning the side, the chocolate will be free to be unmolded. If you leave the side uh, anchor to the mold, uh, what's the chocolate going to do is just crack. So you don't want that. So just clean it, put it back in a refrigerator for another 10 minutes, and it's ready to be unmolded. So I'm going to do that. So when the chocolate cooled down, it just retracts out of the mold. And you can see now, by pushing on one side, those domes come out, OK? So if you do a good job, that should be pretty shiny. Now I'm going to show you something else. I have here a tin plate for oak leaf, so I'm going to use that. And I tell you I'm going to do a mousse, a chocolate mousse, but can you tell me the name of what's on top of the head of a mousse? What? <laughs> Antlers. OK, so that's what I'm doing here. <laughs> you know what? We don't have mousse in France, so. <laughs> we have good cheese, no mousse. <laughs> good wine, no mousse. OK, so I just do that, do the antlers. Never going to remember that one. And now I'm going to do the eye, his eyes. OK. That's fun. If I'm going to teach you how to do that. Then at home, when mommy makes some chocolate, you <laughs> fill it, and you go on the walls. <laughs> and you write. I love daddy. 
And you see how he loves you when you come back from work, you know? <laughs> see how much you love spending the day off painting my house. <laughs> okay, so that's going to be. The eye of the moose. Doesn't look like an eye yet, okay, but give me some time. <laughs> okay, that's about all, all we need. Huh? So I'm going to put that in the refrigerator to set and take some already set. Okay. Now, I'm going to take one of those mold, fill it with I would love my boss to react like that, you know, when you see something like this. <laughs> now I'm going to heat the back of a tip to cut to cut what? The antlers. The antlers. I tell you, that's a tough one. And I'm going to stick the antlers. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I need. Oh, I have the cream. Now, about the eye, how are I going to do that? I need to melt that a little bit more. One second with that. When you melt chocolate like that, don't heat it too much. Otherwise, it will just burn and not melt. And you really can build about anything with chocolate. That's kind of fun to work with. So we're going to put his eye here. <laughs> kind of, if they want to hold. OK. Okay, and we need to do to finish his eyes, so I'm going to do that. With some sour cream, I'm going to draw the center of his eye. And I think that's the first French mousse, you know? <laughs> I'm not sure, but. And I think we're going to be able to test that. Let's so put that, fill a couple, couple of the cups. And you know what? Sometimes you want to just forget about the mousse. Stick a chocolate cup on the plate. Put some fresh raspberry on top. And you have something a little bit more simple. <laughs> so it's all depend how you feel and how much work you want to put on, but results have to be fun, so. Going to eat that? Oh, ho. Are we going to try that? That's for you. And here. So you don't have to do it complicated.
just present it in one way or another one. Do something fun, put just what you like in the dessert, and uh, bon appétit. <laughs> What do you get when you combine chocolate and air? Chocolate souffle, the perfect dessert. People are afraid to make souffle, but you should not be. It's simple, it's easy. It's really a great dessert for a dinner party. The first step is to do what, that work, what we call a chocolate ganache. Chocolate ganache is milk or cream or both together, that's what I put here, and chocolate. So that's going to take uh, certainly a minute until that boil. So I'm going to do my ganache, then add a little bit of cocoa powder to bring a little bit more flavor of chocolate, then a little bit of Grand Marnier to give some orange flavor. And if I need a little bit more liquid, I will add a little bit water. So you know what, I have to start. It's good when, if you have some time when you do your egg white, it's good to start the egg white at a low speed, add a little bit of sugar, and don't go too fast with the egg white. Let's, let the sugar dissolve before you push the speed and actually whip them. So like that, the sugar is really melt in the egg white, and the egg white cannot crumble. You know, sometimes if you go too fast, the egg whites start to crumble. And let me do that here. And when you add your chocolate, it's very lumpy. So it's better to go like that, pretty slow. OK, now I just add my chocolate to the half and half, melting everything together. And actually, when the cream starts to boil again, I'm going to take it off the heat then work on the table. So souffle is something pretty simple to do, especially chocolate souffle. Okay, as you can see, all the chocolate now is completely melt. I'm going to add the cocoa powder. You look like you love chocolate. So because it's very dry when you add the cocoa, you can add a little bit of water and a little bit of orange flavor. And orange and chocolate actually go very well together. And take a small whisk to mix everything now. Don't have any waste, huh? Okay, so what you want to do here is to have that ganache really smooth. Okay, it's coming together now. Want to see how smooth it is? No? No. It's not very good now yet. It's, it's not sweet yet. It's very strong. Okay, so let's speed up the egg white. About the egg white, when they start to be like that, that consistency pretty, pretty soft, pretty creamy, is when they are good to use. If you wait a little bit more, they're going to be a lot more dry and a lot more difficult to mix. It's very easy to do it this way. So you don't want to have the egg white too stiff. Otherwise, when they are too stiff, it's when they begin to separate. So you want the egg white actually pretty soft peak like that. OK, so let's do that here. I'm going to add now the ganache. 
So that's the most messy things you can do. It's when you add the ganache. Be very careful because sometimes you find yourself with chocolate on your nose, chocolate all over, you know. Let's go here. I catch one. I'm glad that was not the eggs, you know. <laughs> so here, be very gentle when you mix that. So what you want to do here is to mix the ganache and the egg white together and the meringue together, but stop when everything is mixed. Don't overmix it, otherwise you're going to lose all the air and instead of having souffle, you're going to have pancake. Okay, now let's put everything in the mold. It's fine if it's a little bit of meringue like that. Now, I'm going to put that in the oven and show you what's happening with the other one. Uh, so it's rising. You know what, I'm going to need... And what you can do is put a little bit of powder sugar on top. Usually when I do that, every time I take one, it's the wrong one. You know, I have cocoa and powder sugar. And, uh, so not too much cocoa, powder sugar. <laughs> <laughs> That's just to give a little contrast. And I love to serve that with a little bit of whipped cream and orange zest, like that. It's fun. Is that candied orange zest? Yes, candied orange zest. Did you buy them? I make them. <laughs> I'm a pastry chef, come on. <laughs> so how are we going to do that? So it's a little bit soft on the middle, and I like to have the souffle like that, you know, just a little bit of cream on top. Yes. Should it always be served cold? Warm or hot? hot? hot. Yeah, you better to eat it hot because otherwise it simply collapse and uh, it's nothing else on the bottom. Voila. Thank you. A lot of people are nuts about chocolate, so I decide to combine them for dessert. Chocolate nuts. The only tricky part is to caramelize the nuts, and I have an expert to help me. Chocolate nuts. Try it, and you will be nuts about it. And I learned this recipe from the ladies who is in front of Cirio Maccioni at Le Cirque, A.G. Maccioni, and she showed me that uh, one day in the pastry shop at Le Cirque, how to do those crocante, or we call that in French, the praline. So, Eiji, if you want to come and okay. demonstrate that with me, that would be fun. <laughs> Thank you, Eiji. And that's pretty hot, so first things, I put that yes. with the sugar. The sugar is over there on your right, if you want to put okay. it on the pot. Thank you. Very, very simple. Okay. Sugar. And, and I have a almonds. little bit of water. A little bit of water to melt. Yeah. Okay, the pot is already hot. And then stirring and stirring and stirring. So when you're tired of stirring, you tell me and I, and I replace yes, you. Yes, huh? okay. So that's, that's a little bit long. We need to wait until the sugar, the sugar going to first dis dissolve then boil with the water, then the water going to evaporate, and the sugar going to crystallize. The sugar going to turn completely white and sandy, 
So that's when the sugar crystallizes. It's no more moisture in the sugar. So we keep stirring until the sugar starts to caramelize. And if we stop at that stage when the, the, the sugar caramelizes, we can put that on a marble with a little bit of olive oil. Nothing will stick. We just unstick the pieces from sticking together. Then the croquante are ready. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go a little bit farther. I will roll that in chocolate. Okay. We're going well, to do a little, a little twist. That's a little French twist. <laughs> that's a same association. <laughs> so I can see here yeah. the nuts start to, to boil. So we have to wait a little bit more. I think so, yes. It takes a little more to... So do you do, you do that, that often? I, well, not anymore. Now, you know, I have a lot of people do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I, I, I think I was doing this when I was 10 years old. We go to the fair in the, you know, the, when it's the San Giovanni or San Francesco, and they have it in the piazza. They, they sell you this crocante in little chunks. And then I go home and say, very easy. So I do it because it's a very easy even for a child to do mm -hmm. it. And I remember, I think I was 10 years old, I was doing this. You start to sell and them? Then <laughs> Not to sell them, I ate them. Then I remember that cereal, I will make it home before even we open the restaurant, and he can have the whole thing by himself because he's <laughs> crazy about it. I start to mix a little bit of sugar with the side. Ooh, that's hot. Yeah. And you don't going to crystallize yet, but you know, it's another couple of minutes, and we're going to see the sugar start to crystallize, turn white, and then there will be time to stirring constantly after that. At the beginning, you don't have to stir all the time. At what age you started to be a pastry? Interesting. Um, I, want, I want to become a chef when I was about 15. My brother is a chef. And I asked him, you know, I was in a small town in the south of France in Bandol. And I asked him, where can I learn that profession? I want to be a chef. I love to eat. I love food. Uh, <laughs> I think it's a good reason. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he tell me, he said, you know, in Bandol, it's a pretty small town. It's no any good restaurant, but it's a good pastry shop. Perhaps you should try to go a little bit on Sunday and to see if you like that. I mean, you never know. So I try on Sunday and on my, you know, when I was at the school, Saturday, Sunday, and vacation, I go to the pastry shop, uh, start to have some liver pain because I eat too much <laughs> chocolate. And, uh, and I love it. I just, I just love to. Yeah, myself too, I like to play. I remember my first um, uh, interest in sweets was to make uh, marron glacé. Oh. oh, oh, you come from the area where I remember you have a lot of chestnuts. I, I boil and I cook and I peel and I make and they broke and then I was doing them again. It's a difficult so process. So many chests, it's so difficult. So it's difficult to do. I and they broke the, a lot. I took the worst assignment of them all to start. <laughs> <laughs> because it was, but I remember that. What that, I want uh, to show you here is the sugar crystallized. All the water, all the water is gone, yeah. you see, and the sugar is like, crystallized sugar. So now what we do, we have to stir constantly. And on the bottom of the pot, the sugar is melting. Starts to melt, yeah. So I just bring the bottom to the top. OK, if I hold the pot, you stir it? Yes, I will, of course. You tell me, I don't do all the stirring. You help me. Yeah, yeah. OK. You hold it <laughs> strong, eh? Yes, go ahead. You know, the first row, it's extremely dangerous. We, we, we burned three people already. Don't That's what Sirio so. doesn't want to sit on the first row, you know? <laughs> now I'm going to burn the scarf. Don't, no, no, no. No, Sirio. <laughs> OK, so the danger nice. here is to, crisp, to caramelize the sugar too much. And if we do that, all the nuts are going to stick together. So we have to stop yeah. when the nuts start to be shiny. That means they're all coated with caramel, but not too much. Otherwise, you have a lot of work when you pour them on the marble. They become like in bunches. <laughs> exactly, yes. And it's a lot more work when you do, when you caramelize it too much. You want me to finish? OK. OK, we're almost done. 
So that's what we, at, at this stage, that's what you can find um, yes. outside, what people do outside on the street. Oh, yeah, yeah I know, yes, with the, with the caramel, melted caramel. And you know, like, like every French, I have to do something a little bit more fancy. So I'm going to, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to roll them in, in chocolate. But we're going to keep a third of it. So like that, in our presentation, we will have the plain nuts with no chocolate and the other one with chocolate. And a little croquante we see for cereal. <laughs> OK, and we make a bag for cereal to take home. <laughs> cereal, can I have a day off tomorrow? I'll give you the croquante. <laughs> you see, it doesn't say yes, huh? <laughs> can I have a day off? <laughs> okay, so you tell me to put a little bit of olive oil. Yes, so it doesn't stick to the... Okay, marble. so I'm going to do that. My mother would put that, oh, teach me to put olive oil everywhere. <laughs> As a laxative, olive oil. <laughs> As uh, many different things, always olive oil was the When cure. you go to the For beach? cooking or not. When you go to the beach and you burn too much. Olive, olive oil. oil. <laughs> <laughs> no, before olive oil to, to take the sun. And if you burn too much, water and olive oil to cool down your skin. This is what uh, they will say. <laughs> and then for the fever that you get also yeah, olive oil. A lot of olive oil everywhere. <laughs> so now, on the marble. So, Eiji, do they look right? Oh, yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so now, actually, they are not too, too hot. The sugar crystallizes, so that means the sugar doesn't stick to your finger. So you can, you can move them. They're not going to bite you or to burn you. My god, they are so hard. I don't know how you can touch them. <laughs> <laughs> no, they are, they, are, they are really hot. Okay, I'm going to put that now in a bowl. Okay, that's for Sirio. <laughs> no, please. <laughs> oh, the smell of this, of the roasted and nuts is something incredible. And now I have some mm. already cold nuts in the refrigerator, and I'm going to show you. You're going to help me, and we're yes. going to coat them with chocolate. So okay. the chocolate is ready here, temper, and I need Ladle. Let's take this one. So I'm going to stir them, and you pour the chocolate over. Okay. Let's take. What do we need here? Let's take something like that. Okay. So the nuts are, I think, in here. So the only difference is those ones. They are cold. You made them cold first, then to make the, Yes, the like that the chocolate will coat a lot easier. Coat. Do you I want see. to put the, the chocolate, like a couple ladle? Yes. Okay. Mm, I like to cool chocolate. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay, we can stop a little bit now. Okay. We're going to wait until all the nuts are coated. So you, you see, it's again the same, the same thing. If yeah. I stop to stir, everything will become a block. But if I keep stirring, the chocolate is crystallizing around the nuts, and we can separate them. OK, now I'm going to ask you to put a little bit of powdered sugar on top. OK. A little bit more. That's it? Uh, that's it, thank you. Okay. And you see, they're all separated. Okay, now you just finish like that for the one who stick together. This is what, see, the passing by between every customer he goes pick one. <laughs> one at a yeah. table 26, one at no, table 12. <laughs> then he tell me, you put too much butter in your desserts, you know what I mean? <laughs> Okay, and I have here a beautiful silver, pl silver platter where I can put some of the nuts. Okay, now we're going to put the rest of it. 
and we're going to do the same thing. And we will put cocoa at the end. Okay, a little bit more. Thank you. So remember when you do that, don't stop to stir. No, it's a bitter sweet chocolate. If you want to put a little bit of cocoa on top. Okay, thank you. Oh, you know what? If you can put a little bit more. Yeah. It's not enough, thank you. Perfect. Great. And actually the cocoa, the powdered sugar, prevent them to stick together. Now I can put that on the other side here. And on the middle, we're going to put... I don't put the one from Sirio, huh? take the other one. A very easy way to make a chocolate Napoleon is with this, a coconut wheel that you can buy or make. Come buy it with chocolate cream and you will get an elegant dessert in no time at all. The first things I'm going to do, I'm going to make what we call a creme anglaise, it's milk and yolks and sugar, and we're going to pour that over chocolate and make a chocolate cream. Okay, so I have here nine yolks. Mm. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I have here nine yolks, four cups of half and half. So two cream, two milk. I have an accountant over there who have problem with counting, so <laughs> two and two, four. <laughs> we get it. Uh, half cup of sugar, three gelatin sheets, and 2.5 cup of chocolate. So I have to bring that to a boil actually almost boiling. I'm going to mix the sugar and the egg yolks. So far you can do it. <laughs> no problem. Okay, you mix the yolks and the sugar pretty well instead, and, you know, when it starts to be a little bit wider and do what we call the ribbon. Not yet. Oh. <laughs> Okay, start to be pretty nice now. The milk is pretty hot. I'm going to put it, you know, like two thirds of the milk on top, like that. I think you're going to win the contest, huh? <laughs> now, serious things here. When you do that, that mixture cannot boil. If that mixture boils, the egg yolks will separate from the, from the milk and the cream. So we have to bring that to 85 degrees just before that going to boil and to see when, when um, it's thick enough. I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so I'm keep cooking that. So what I do, I take some of the liquid on top of the spatula and I run my finger on top. And when the two sides of the liquid doesn't come back together, that means the liquid is thick enough, it's ready. So it's a little bit liquid. So it's not ready yet. So that's the technique to cook what we call a creme anglaise. Okay, and with that, you can do ice cream, you can do sauce, or you can do chocolate cream like that. It's a base for a lot of different things in pastry. So now it starts to be pretty thick. A little bit more than that going to be ready. And when you do it a couple times, three or four, 
<laughs> then, then you don't mess it up anymore. And if, <laughs> and if that happens, you have, I don't have it one here, but you know those immersion blender, you just put an immersion blender, just mix everything, and uh, even if, if it's separated, you know, things come back together this way. Okay, so now I'm going to add the gelatin sheets. I put the gelatin sheets in cold water before, so like that it's soft. Now the gelatin sheets is just melting. And I'm going to pour that over the chocolate. So, and I do that in three times. Give an emulsion every time. And chocolate-wise, you can use any chocolate you like. Um, actually, it's important to use something you like, something you love the flavor. That's a good American chocolate. So I just mix everything together. By putting the whole liquid on top of the chocolate, the, the chocolate will melt too fast, and the fat will separate from it. So that's why I do it slowly in two or three times. You still can do it? That's okay? That's easy? <laughs> Good. You stop me huh, when uh, something goes wrong here. Don't send me an email after a nasty email telling me, you know what, that recipe doesn't work. <laughs> okay, a little bit more of the hot cream. That's two, no? That's two times, okay, two. It starts to smell pretty good now. Okay, now the last time. Let's scrape everything, huh? Don't lose anything here. Nothing happened, <laughs> nothing broke, <laughs> stay calm. <laughs> okay. Now, when it's cooled down a little bit, I mean, the chocolate was cold, so the temperature cooled down, that's when you can add flavor. So a little bit of <laughs> orange flavor. You know, between the chocolate and that, I tell you, that have to be good. What a mess in this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to put everything into a terrine like that. Okay, so what's going to happen here is the cocoa butter of the chocolate going to harden and also the gelatin going to fix everything together, to put everything together. So then that's going to be a cream. That's not going to be a mousse. That's not going to be too light. That's going to be more creamy, of course but more flavorful because it's no air inside. Okay, so more concentration of test. So creamy, more flavorful. Okay, so you can do that one day ahead, put it in the refrigerator, or at least three hours ahead. You have to wait until everything cools down. And one day ahead is better because chocolate, after one day, mature, just give more test to the fluid, to the liquid, and, and all those flavors are more intense. So one day ahead is better. Put that in the refrigerator. And next day. <laughs> okay, so I have here. That's a big plate. Do you have something smaller? Yes. So I'm going to take one of those twills. And then, no, only one. <laughs> I'm going to put some cream on top of that. So <laughs> just dip a spoon into hot water and do what we call in French a quenelle, something like that. Okay. Put that here. Flatten it a little bit. Then you do another quenelle. Still okay? You stopped me, huh? You know, that's a great cream. I love it. Okay, now we're going to add a little bit of coconuts here. The twills are coconuts too, so. Okay, 
that's a nice one. And we have a nice chocolate and coconuts Napoleon. I'm going to put a little bit of fruits around and raspberry sauce. Pardon? How convenient, yeah. You want to know how to do the raspberry sauce or you want to test the raspberry sauce? Because if you want to test it... <laughs> it's just raspberry blend with a little bit of powdered sugar mixed together with a hand, hand blender. And um, that's all. And mango the same way. A little bit more coconuts on top like that. You can put a little bit of berries around. I have a friend lawyer here, and uh, he look at me like, don't throw them, Jack. I mean, <laughs> if you hurt someone, you sell your house. <laughs> so Glenn, what's about trying that? You want to come here and try that with me? OK. I know. I know Glenn for a long time, and I know if I give him that dessert, he's going to tell me that's not big enough. So I give him, you know. <laughs> no, okay, I give him that. <laughs> and I give you a spoon with that. Yeah. And I don't think you ever tried that at Le Cirque. You never tried that cream, so I need to know what you think about that. And the rest of it will be on the back later. Delicious. I'm not a doctor, and I don't play when I'm on TV. But I do have surgical gloves to make chocolate truffle the ultimate chocolate dessert. It's a mess to make. But wow, that's really good. The chocolate has to be a very, a very good quality chocolate. That's the first thing. Shop in small pieces, so like that the chocolate will melt fast. Second thing, cream. And I have four cups of cream, and the cream have to be boiling. So I'm going to pour about half of it, and stir everything together. So you see if the chocolate melts, and you can see that elasticity, it, it doesn't separate, it stays pretty well together. That means it's not too hot, and we still have the fat, the emulsion of the fat together. So that's very good. That's what we want. OK, when we reach this point, it's very good to use an immersion blender that helps to keep the emulsion of the chocolate. OK, now I can just finish to incorporate the cream. You know, I was doing a demonstration one day, and I have one of those big professional mixer, immersion blender like that, into the chocolate, and I wear my chef's coat. And I'm, I mean, those things are big like that, you know, and I have a big bowl of chocolate, so I'm melting that ganache. And I pull the, the mixer a little bit too much back, and the blade under catch the chocolate and <laughs> send chocolate all over. So I just back up and I hate to have chocolate of the dirty, you know. So I look at myself and I have no chocolate. So I start to smile like, wow, you know, I don't catch myself. And I see all the people in the front you know, <laughs> licking themselves, you know. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> Those things happen again. <laughs> OK, now the ganache is ready. And we're going to pour this ganache into a half size tray lined with cellophane wrap. And if you do the same quantity of ganache, you need to have a lot of friends, because that's a lot. Mm -hmm. 
And when you reach this stage, the good things to do is to put cellophane on top and let the ganache cool down for at least four hours. Or even better, just let it overnight. Like that, when you wake up in the morning, <laughs> the ganache will be just ready to go. So I'm going to leave that here. And I'm going to take some one day later. <laughs> now, I have here, where is it? A piping bag with a tip. And again, a half size tray. I'm going to put some of that cold, creamy ganache into the piping bag. OK, that's enough. You can take a spoon and just spoon the ganache and do like that. It's one way to do it. And it's fine if you don't have a piping bag. Uh, I like piping bag because I use them a lot, and I can show off with that. So that's why I use them. So here, I'm just going to form those <coughs> truffles. OK, like that. OK, when you pipe all of your truffles, you can leave them outside again for a couple hours or just put them in the refrigerator. And if you put them in the refrigerator, they're going to cool down. And what we do, let's play doctor now. You know you can make balloon with that. You just blow them, tie them, and you can play with it. We do that after, okay? We wash them and we play, okay. So we take those ganache and we just squeeze them and roll them. Okay, so you don't have to make them perfectly round, but again, you know, when you present them, if they are round, um, that's a lot nicer. So that's why I make them all round. And when you get used to it, you can run two other times. <laughs> if they don't touch each other. OK, that work. So I don't going to do all that. I have some already done. And I'm going to show you that. They are here. That's when you spend some time running them. And I'm going to ask a friend of mine, Anne, if you can come and help me. She loves to do that. You can see it. <laughs> I tell you, she loves it. OK, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the, the truffle on the chocolate, put them here. And what you do, you roll them, and you arrange them along the, the tree. And we have, we have several things over there to do. Okay. OK? So if you do them with one of those forks, you do it this way. And if you want to take, you have another fork on the right. You see it here? And you roll it. You put the fork just here on the bottom, like that, and you roll it. Okay. okay? And then you leave it. That's easy. That's easy? Get it? Yeah, the fun doesn't start yet. Ah. Wait. <laughs> okay, okay, another one? Okay, so now I'm going to show you how we do them. Pardon, no, it, that was clean. <laughs> how we <laughs> How we do them when we are in the restaurant, we put some chocolate in our hands, whoops, like that, and we put them here. That's the way. You have to roll them completely on and I'm leave them. <laughs> and you have to go faster and don't put them together. <laughs> Chocolate is drying and <laughs> she's doing good? Yeah, she's doing yeah. good, huh? Yeah. She's doing great. Okay. 
No, separate them. I mean, you don't, don't, don't leave a job undone. OK, that's good. You can do like that, too. I'm sorry, I should show you that. <laughs> OK. And we can roll them into cocoa powder. That's more fun, because here, you know, really, if you sneeze or what, you're going to have cocoa all over. So be careful. Don't put any cocoa on me. And you work dirty. OK, now we have some. So the first things we rolled them in, I don't even tell you, that was some nuts, some pecan. We just toast them, chop them. <coughs> And that's all we do to the pecan. And then we roll those truffle in it. That's just unsweet cocoa powder. And the last things we're going to roll them in is toasted coconuts, breadcrumbs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's an idea. I tried that. <laughs> so the only problem with that, you do need help when you do that. You, you need to be two. Because it's difficult to dip them, then to roll them with your other hands like that stuff. With those truffle, we just wrap them in little package like that. Then you can impress your friend. You can just offer them. Give one to you, of course. And one to my friends here. Come to get it? Great. So I think we can say a big bravo to Anne. Anne, thank you very much. Check, you don't shake my hand. No. What's about a great chocolate cake? You can make it as simple or as fancy as you wish. All it is, a basic chocolate cream and a flourless chocolate cake. So the first things I have here is 10 egg yolks and here 10 egg whites. So with those 10 egg whites, we're just going to make a meringue, I mean beat them and add some sugar. So let's start those egg whites. When you beat some egg white like that, add a quarter of the sugar like that and let those egg white just whip and, and gain some volume. Then when you have some volume, you can add the rest of the sugar. And here I'm going to add the butter. Actually, you know, it's pretty simple. <laughs> One cup of almond flour. I'm going to mix everything together now. I need what oh, I think so. That's it. I need a quarter cup of rum. Okay. That's going to give some good flavor. Okay, we can put that on top speed now. I'm not dirty yet. So the egg whites are almost ready. We have our mixture here ready. And the chocolate is melted and quite warm. So we're going to combine everything together and put that on a half size pan. So the meringue has to be pretty stiff, but don't over whip the egg white, otherwise they will start to separate it. Then when you mix your chocolate, everything collapses. So just stiff, but not over whip. Okay, now I can put that here. Mm. 
Let's call some friends. Aren't that going to be a big cake? <laughs> Where I put that? So you see, I don't, I'm, I'm very careful when I fold everything together. And when it's almost mixed, I can add the chocolate. Oh, that smells good. And we just combine everything together. I tell you that was a simple recipe, huh? The most difficult things to do is crack the egg, so everybody can do it, that one. OK, so you see, I have some egg white who doesn't want to combine. So what I do when that happens, and be very careful when you do that, you take a whisk and you just break them like that. OK? So you see a mistake and you see how to fix it. You know, it's what I do all the time. I make mistake, I find a way to fix it. <laughs> and that was because I put the chocolate too fast. Usually you put the chocolate and you still mix. And I was thinking, uh, let's put everything. OK, so that's done. OK, so let me give you a test of that. You want to try it? <laughs> no, let's not do that. difficult things in this recipe is to stay clean, you know, that's a... So be very careful when you spread the cake in the pan, push it and don't, don't smash it, because you have some air, you have a nice emulsion here, and you don't want to lose it. So just be very gentle with it. Okay. And now we're going to put that in the oven for about 20, 25 minutes at 330, 340 degree oven. And 20 minutes later. What's happening is um, when the cake is in the oven, you're going to see the cake come pretty high. And when you take it out, it comes back to about the same volume. So that's OK. That's normal. Nothing is wrong there. That, that's, that's fine. It's because we don't have any flour or any starch in the cake, so no structure. So the cake will come back to the same volume than we start with. So the second step is to take it out of the tray. very delicately. <laughs> okay, now we're going to cut that in four. How many are we? Four. <laughs> okay, that's the way the pastry chef decides where is the middle, you know? Let's take a chance on that one. So I'm going to put one of those cake into a piece of cardboard. So the cake is very fragile because again, you remember we don't put any flour in the cake, so that's why it's so fragile. I have here some uh, ganache, and ganache is nothing else than cream and chocolate. And I'm going to take some of that ganache, put it over the cake, and just spread it like that. You can spread a little bit of nuts on the middle if you like. OK. 
Okay. Now I'm going to put another layer. It's almost the same size, huh? I love trimming because I eat them. <laughs> okay. So let's go for another layer now. I usually stop after three layers, but if you want something pretty high, you know, you can put four layers. One more. And you see, if he broke, that's fine. That's a very fragile cake, so that's OK. So now I just spread some chocolate on top of it. And that's so dense, you can definitely feed eight people with that. OK, six. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, I do the side like that. It's a little bit doing, you know, when you do drywalls at home and <laughs> just close all those holes. It's more difficult to do a square cake, actually, than a round cake, because square cake has angle. And those angles are always pretty difficult to negotiate, you know? So that's why I don't know why I don't do a round one, you know? OK. So then, when the chocolate is all over, we're going to make straight a straight edge now. Don't make it fall, huh? When that like that. <coughs> and you put it in a refrigerator for you know an hour just for the chocolate to set. And here I have a chocolate cake who's already set. It's not the same, but it's almost the same. Same way. Same thing. Voila. OK, now I'm going to just do some very traditional decoration here. I will do that like that. And I'm going to, do, to turn that around so like that you can see it. You can take a cake mold, take a ganache, and decorate the cake mold a couple of times, just as a warm up. So then when you get the movement, scrape that ganache, don't trash it, put it back in, <laughs> in the bag, and do the cake. And, and you know, that's one of the, one of the way we learn, professional learn, or we teach uh, at the school how to use a piping bag. It's by doing that on top of a styrofoam or a cake. And if you do that, you know, several times, then when you have the real cake, it's a lot easier. Piping is only a question of pressure, you know, the pressure you're going to give to the piping bag, and speed. So when you get that, the relationship between the two, he began pretty simple after to do those decorations. And what we can do is just because it's very dark, you put a little bit of coconuts. You can put toasted coconuts, or you can use nuts, like hazelnuts or toasted walnuts, and chop them pretty thin, and put that around the cake.
You want a bigger piece than that? <laughs> okay, so that's for you, that's for you, and that's for me. <laughs> so you want to come and you want to try it? You don't have to be shy, come with me, come on. Come here. You come with me too? Okay, so stay there. Whoops, cake fall. You don't want to try it with me? Come on, we can do that. Take that. You see, you take the big spoon, huh? You like it? Okay, you like it. Here is a dessert that combines dark and white chocolate. Of course, white chocolate isn't really chocolate. It's cocoa butter, sugar, and milk. But that's good. And that's what I use to make one of my signature desserts, the clown. And remember, every circus needs a clown. Here I have some white chocolate, and I'm going to pour over it some hot cream to do a ganache. And in that hot pan, melt some gelatin. During that time, I can mix. Uh, let's take a whisk for that. To melt this chocolate. And that's the base for a lot of cakes. We can fill a lot of cake with that. We can leave a lot, fill a lot of candy. I try to do the tricks with two whisks here, and it doesn't work. So you just have to stir. Almost ready. I'm going to add the gelatin. And we're just going to remove all the lumps and put that over ice. Um, we can leave that for perhaps half an hour, it will be cold, but it's a lot faster to put it over ice, and that's going to be ready in a couple of minutes. So the ganache now is ready. You can see it is a lot more thick. And it's time to mix it with the cream. Actually, I'm going to do that. Um, we have two different consistency here. So if I put all the cream in the chocolate and start to stir, I'm going to have some lumps because I have two different consistencies. So in order to put the two consistencies the same, I'm going to add a little bit of it, stir it. And that's for every mix in pastry. We always do this way. And now I can finish to mix everything together. Again, very gentle. So the next, oh, it's here. That's good enough. Let's put that here. So you see I'm lining the mold with the chocolate mousse, and I'm going to put that in a freezer, like that. And I have one ready, a little bit harder. And I'm going to fill this one with the dark chocolate mousse. You have to be very careful to don't stir it, because otherwise you will, you will just make it flat and you lose all the, all the bubbles, all the bubbles you can see here. So that's why I'm extremely careful here to don't lose any of those bubbles.
like that. And now I'm going to take a little piece of sponge and I'm going to close that. You don't have to put sponge, but I like to have, when I eat a cake, I like to have some sponge on the bottom of the cake. You can use what we call genoise. Uh, otherwise, you can use, if you have some pound cake, you cut it pretty thin, you put a little bit of alcohol on it, and you can close the cake with it. So I have one ready here, already frozen. The thing is, you have to wait until that th this cake is frozen to unmold it. So it's why I have one here. You look a little bit different, you know, actually I have all the color here, red, yellow, white. So I put that on hot water. Try to not burn myself. Ooh -ha. And you just push one side. And it's coming out. Uh, push slowly. Uh-oh. He, he has a hole in his head. <laughs> I'm going to decorate this side, and it's the nicest side. So now it's time to play a little bit more with chocolate. The mouth first. So let's make a mouth. Ooh, I'm trembling. I have too much coffee this morning. <laughs> it's a smiling mouth, huh? A little bit crooked, but you know. We can put a little bit more chocolate here and here, and it's fine. So the nose is going to be a strawberry. Are we going to give him glasses, no? That's fun, the glasses. Who wear glasses? <laughs> That's fun because one is bigger than the other one. That's going to be his ear. He's like me, he's losing them, so we're not going to do too many, okay? <laughs> okay, that's enough. I have chocolate all over my hands. And I think the last things now are going to be his high. So that's the fun parts to do. And for that, I'm going to use a tablespoon. Let's do it like that. So the first things we do is the center of the eye, the uh, iris. So we're going to be nice with that clone. We don't going to make it look cross eye. We're going to make it straight. Like that. So now Let's fill another cornet. I try to do it with blue eye, <laughs> but blue, <laughs> blue chocolate is difficult to find, so. So we put that around this way. And now, now is the easy part, so we're just going to fill it with white chocolate. So don't put chocolate all over. Oops. Have some lumps here. And the only things I have to do now is to put that in the refrigerator for five minutes and unmold everything. And I have that ready here. <laughs> I forget the eyebrow. I do the eyebrow here, I forget the eyebrow there, but you know, <laughs> it's the same way to do so. So, how are we going to do that? Let's do it this way. So we say the first thing is the mouth. So, We 
who make him smoke. He's the only one allowed to smoke here, okay? <laughs> I give him a, I put a big strawberry, you know? <laughs> and it starts to be funny when you put the eye on it, you know? It's, it's just. <laughs> now, the eyebrow. Cannot see too well, so we give him a pair of glass. And the only thing we miss now. <laughs> are they here? <laughs> so, you know how much you pay to the doctor to have that done? <laughs> So you can talk to me, you know? <laughs> yeah, but you can eat them. <laughs> We're almost there. A little bit more here because, you know, it can be pretty susceptible and uh, You know, you should see me on the morning, actually. <laughs> I still have some here in front, too. I don't know what kind of gel you use, but believe me, that's pretty strong. Do I forget anything? No? Good job. For me, chocolate is a medium to express myself. When it's melted, I love to turn chocolate into fantasy. You can mold it, shape it, paint it, or give it any texture you want. For you artists out there, try to make your own fantasy and centerpiece. The first step for that is to temper the chocolate, and, and everybody heard about that tempering chocolate. It's a little bit, it's complicated. It's, I heard about it, I don't want to do it at home. It's, it's scary. Actually, I want to show you the classical way of tempering chocolate. And it's, if you follow that step by step, you will temper your chocolate and have no problem. So what I do here, I take some block of chocolate, I break them on small pieces, put a double boiler, put the chocolate on top of it, let the chocolate melt. So here the chocolate is warm. When you touch it, it's pretty warm. All the molecules of fat inside the chocolate are separated. In order to put the molecule of fat together, I'm going to pour one third of that chocolate on the marble. Be careful to don't pour any water when you pour the chocolate on the marble. Is that messy or what? <laughs> I spread the chocolate over the marble. And now, I'm going to move the chocolate until the chocolate starts to crystallize. And I'm going to show you when that happened. And I also can do plaster, you know, any kind of... <laughs> Thank you.
Do, do you like the chocolate now? <laughs> Tempering. <laughs> In French, we call it table because I do it on a table. So we say table, and um, table is the name of the table in French. But I really don't know if it's a name in English. So now you can see, I don't know if you can see it, but I can feel it. The chocolate starts to be pretty thick here. And I have the chocolate start to crystallize. Actually, I can see some lumps here. And that's when. It's really now, now it's too cold. It's too cold to, to use. But I'm going to put it back inside that warm chocolate. And because I have one third cold, two third warm, the, the temperature here, no, here, going to rise. This temperature going to go down. And the chocolate will be ready to use. If the chocolate is too warm, I have to redo it again in a smaller quantity. If the chocolate is too cold, I just have to warm it up a little bit. So that's the way to adjust the temperature. So here, that's the messy part. If you, if you miss the ball, <laughs> yeah, you have chocolate in your shoes. Then, uh, if you have what shoe, <laughs> so now I'm mixing the cold and the warm chocolate together. What you're looking for is to see if all the lumps disappear and how, how warm is to your hands. It, it cannot feel warm. If it feels warm to your hands, that means you have to redo it again. You have to temper again. If it, if it feels just, just warm, almost cold to the hands, that means the chocolate is ready. If the, if the lamps doesn't disappear, the chocolate is too cold. So you have to put it over the double boiler. How does it feel? It's, I think it's ready now. I'm pretty lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I always find those mold in um, where, where I can buy plastic pieces, plastic, um, plastic factory here in Chinatown is full of, <laughs> of that kind of things. And I love to go over there, buy boxes, you know, it's little box like that. And I love to mold chocolate in here. And the way to mold a box like that is actually very easy. A tray with a rack on top. That's what you need, a ladle. And you just fill the box with chocolate. Then when it's full, empty it. So what's happened now, the inside of the box is coated, it's coated with chocolate. And I'm going to put it upside down on the rack. The chocolate is going to crystallize on the side of the box are going with a knife to cut the edge, the bottom edge. And when the chocolate will retract, because it shrink a little bit when it cool down, I will be able to pull it out of the mold. For a big mold like that, you can do what we call a chocolate marble by putting a little bit of white everywhere, a little bit of dark, and now is the fun part. <laughs> Stick it in chocolate, then just spread it. And you see what's happened? Wow. Mmm. Mm. Ah, whoa. <laughs> OK, then when you have the design you want, Wash your hands before you answer the phone. <laughs> then, again, same technique. Take some chocolate, put it inside the mold. Line the side of the mold with the, with the chocolate. And let it drip out. Like that. OK. Now, you take a brush. And with the brush, first what you do, you temper the brush. The brush can be a little bit cold. So you put it in chocolate and you move it 
like that for the chocolate to temper the brush. Then you can brush the inside of the mold. Bless you. <laughs> so you give, just give a coat like that. Then when it's cold, you give another coat, then a third coat. Then when you have enough thickness, you can unmold whatever you're doing. So I do one like that also, just by brushing chocolate in it, and chocolate will come out of the mold. I'm going to show you how to do the ballerine here. I want to introduce you to Adam Taini Tiani. Tiani is good. <laughs> Adam Tiani. <laughs> How are you doing, Adam? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. You do have, you do, you do have a French accent, too. And <laughs> do I have to speak in a French accent? Yes, please. And <laughs> Nobody gets a show like this if you don't speak in a French accent. <laughs> so this is the chocolat. Uh, I'm sorry. Dark or white? <laughs> Go ahead. So Adam uh, designed Le Cirque, designed Chirco, um, designed the plate of Le Cirque. He's the Macioni's designer. And he also designed what is the name of Sarah. This? Sarah. <laughs> so the first step, and you have, you have to listen to me here because I'm listening. Oh, I'm okay. Listening, <laughs> the first step, you can draw on a piece of paper what you want to reproduce. <clears throat> then after that, you put a piece of plastic on top of it, and this plastic, it's when somebody gives you flour. That's what is around the flower. <laughs> so now keep the plastic when somebody gives you some flower. <laughs> so the first things to do is to trace around, like that, with a chocolate cornet. And that go a little bit higher. Now I'm going to do that. Like that. Now we're going to do the body. Does that look like what you create, Adam? Just a piece of cake. <laughs> I mean, Jack makes this thing look like, you know, I mean, anybody can do it. You just take a little chocolate and you go like this. And then, oh. It is easy. I mean, come on, I do it in front of you here. How many years have you been training on this one? Just before yesterday. Just before yesterday, yes. Okay. And that whole thing, like that hibachi thing of making the, you know, whatever, tempering <laughs> the chocolate, you know. <laughs> Piece of cake. <laughs> Absolutely, you know. Right. Okay. Nothing to do, right? When you trace all the outside, now I'm going to fill the inside with, again, tempering chocolate. And if somebody talk too much on the back, I'm going to throw some chocolate over there. <laughs> I can do that. OK, so you, you do the security here. OK, so I just finished the legs. Now I'm going to fill the rest with the white chocolate. Mm. Is that Belgian chocolate? Yes, that's Belgium chocolate. So the side we're going to use is not the side you can see, it's the side against the plastic, because that side is going to be extremely shiny. I want everybody to go home tonight and train. <laughs> With this, you know. Tempering chocolate wow. before you go to bed. OK, so. Yes. <laughs> now we're going to show you how I look when it's finished.
Thank you. Thank you. So, does that look like, does that look like the, the one you create? It looks perfect, but the best thing you've ever made, truthfully, yes. was when you built the city of New York as my wedding cake. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.